Good morning, everyone. Would you stand with me as we worship and we praise our God who saves this morning?
Good morning and welcome to Mountain View Alliance Church. My name is Sean. 
and uh, we are glad uh, to be together in the house of God. Amen. Never want to start your announcements uh, with sad news, uh, but it's, it's been a sad week for us here at Mountain View Line Church. Our dear friend and brother, Bert Burgess, uh, went to be with the Lord on April 17th uh, to be united with uh, his dear wife, Karen, and we too who have hope in the Lord Jesus will one day see them both again, and we will, re- we will rejoice with him. Uh, I'm sure he's much happier uh, today than he's been in a very long time, and uh, there will be a service uh, upcoming. We'll give you announcements with that uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, But on Wednesday, May the 1st, uh, there is going to be a funeral service for May Wilmont here. It will also be live streamed at 2 p.m., and we'd ask that you would, if you can, to join us to remember this amazing woman of God in the many years uh, that she fellowshiped uh, with us in the life uh, that she lived. We are going through that time in our church where things like this happen. And we just need to remember the family uh, and those close to both Bert and Will and and to their friends, too, uh, to be that support uh, and that encouragement. And we pray uh, for them uh, during this time. On the 30th of April, we'll be having our monthly Renew Night of Worship and Prayer, and God willing, I'll finally be able to come and lead it. Uh, The last couple of months, things keep happening when it's time for me to do Renew, but it looks good for for this this time. Uh, So we want you to come in that evening, and as we give our our praises and our prayers to the Lord, uh, because He is doing amazing and wonderful things here at Mountain View and in our community Uh, And we connect with him through our praises and our prayer where we get to hear uh, from him and we get to say to him those things uh, that we want to continue to do uh, as the body of Christ. We are going to call up Dan Werner now. He has a special announcement about uh, something that's coming up uh, next uh, Sunday. Dan. Thank you. Um, yeah, so next Sunday, uh, we're planning to have a, uh, a church meal after service uh, right in the sanctuary here. We'll do, like, do uh, a, a soup and a, a bread meal. And so we just want to invite everyone from the English and the Mandarin congregation to stay for, for lunch. Their soup and, and bread will be provided. And uh, this is something that we want to try to uh, pick up again. We, we used to do this before... Uh, before the past few years of darkness. And uh, we're trying to get back into the habit of healthy fellowship and healthy eating. And um, yeah, it's just one thing that I'm, I'm acutely, acutely aware of is that there are a lot of uh, new people at our church. And what better of a way to connect and get to know each other and to get into each other's lives than to uh, sit down and eat together and just spend some time together in that. So um yeah, so, so we're uh, looking forward to that. So it's short notice, but if you can put that into your calendars, um, it's something that we want to make a, a regular practice um, once a month. So um, yeah, so, so next Sunday, plan to stay for, for, uh, for some food and some fellowship, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there. Thanks, Dan. I'm going to ask uh, James, our chairman of our board, to come up. And while he comes up, I'll just let you know that For those of you who just like to keep eating, uh, on this coming Tuesday, uh, April 23rd, there is going to be a luncheon here at 11 Uh, (laughs) a.m. And we're going to be hearing, we're hearing today from one of our international workers, uh, Lauren White. Uh, But uh, on Tuesday, uh, you'll get a chance to, you know, ask questions and you'll get a chance to talk to them, uh, him and Kathy Lou. Uh, at a more personal level around the lunch table. So if you can come on Tuesday uh, for this, we'd ask that you would sign up uh, through the Church Center app uh, or through the link in the newsletter or at the front desk uh, in the foyer. Uh, and now I'll turn it over our announcement here to James. Good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> you don't see me up here too often, mostly because I'm running the soundboard and setting up for sound, So, uh, but I'm... I'm here. <laughs> um, 
as elders, we made a change to how we report our finances on the uh, newsletter, the weekly newsletter, and you, some of you may have noticed the difference. Um, we found like it was it was difficult to understand how we were doing as a church year to date giving because we used to have the goal for the entire year and then how we are at the year to date. So we've changed that to show the year to date broken out by the week. So you know week to week how we are doing on the year to date budget. And you can see that on here. This is a screenshot from our uh, newsletter. So general fund is, uh, we're, we're currently at 190,000 for the year giving and our target to hit budget is 203. So we're, we're a little bit short, but uh, we've noticed some improvement over the last month. So just, uh, just wanted to point that out to everyone, make you aware that the, of that change. If you have any questions, feel free to ask any of us elders. Uh, we got Sean here, myself, Dave, Tim, and then Don, when he's uh, back from vacation, he'll be around too. Um, so, yeah. And if anyone wants to be a sound tech, come see me. <laughs> that was the bonus announcement. I'm not sure why I'm up here. I'm just the, the guy that hands the mic uh, this morning here. So I'm going to call uh, Brenda uh, Choswell to come up as she has an announcement. And while she's coming up, if our children, our Radiant Kids children, could also come up and sit here in the front. Uh, Brenda has a special announcement for you and also for your parents and grandparents. So Brenda, I'll get the mic down to you. All right. Yes. Parents and grandparents, pay attention. All right, let's go, guys. Quick, quick. Okay. Switch around this way. So, good morning, guys and ladies. How are you today? And how was your week? Did any of you do some work so you could raise some money? What? Right on. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. All right. So, like you heard last week, um, we're doing Operation Baby Bottle once again. And this year, because last year, who can guess how much money we raised last year? What's that? Ah, who can guess? Come on, guys. Guess. Yes. You guessed? I'm sorry. How much? Um, 200. Sorry, you're wrong. Higher, higher. Seth. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Last year, the kids raised $550, Woo. which I thought was pretty amazing. This year, we're going for 600 and I think they can do it. Now, um, you guys, remember what we talked about last week? We want you to work hard, raise some money, but we also want to open it up to the parents and the grandparents who feel free to just pass a little money off to those kids and bring it on in on Sunday mornings. And we're going to have, um, I think we can go over 600. Um, there are these in the back, if anybody um, would like to do it online. The problem is, if you do it online, it's not going to be part of our total, so we won't really know. So, um, feel because it goes directly to Operation Baseball. And that's fine. We want the money, them to get the money. But if you want to help um, raise the total up to 600, then somehow just give it to one of us or to the kids, and we'll add it to the, the fund here. So I think that's it. All right, kids, questions for you. Who remembers what happened to Jesus when he was already older and back in Jerusalem, and all of a sudden he disappeared? His parents were like, what in the world? Who remembers what happened to him? No, he didn't die. Yes? He, thank you. He went to the temple where his Lord was. And you know what, guys? It is a privilege every Sunday to go to Radiant Kids and to learn about him. Jesus wanted to learn more about God. And by um, this privilege that we have of going to Radiant Kids, we get to learn more about God like Jesus did. And so I'm going to pray for you, and then off you go to learn more. So let's be excited about all of this. Okay, guys? Hmm? All right, let's pray. Close your eyes. Thank you, God, so much for um, this opportunity to help with Operation Baby Bottle, and we just pray that you would help the kids to work hard and be able to raise some money and bring it in. 
And thank you, too, Father, for Radiant Kids and this opportunity they have to go and learn more about you. And I pray for the teachers, that you would help them to just be filled with your Holy Spirit as they teach and just sense that your presence is with them as they go and be with each of these little ones. Give them a good morning and then a great week, I pray in your name. Amen. Okay, church, would you stand with me again as we continue to worship this morning?
There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The King of Love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on the cross they made for sinners. For every curse is blood. Hail you, King Jesus. You are our God. We are your children. Your love for us is the reason why we can love, why we can love you, why we can love each other. Today, Father, we pray. We pray for those who have gone to be with you. We pray that you have welcomed them. We thank you that you have welcomed them actually, Lord, that they are in your presence. We pray, God, for us who are left behind, 
that as we grieve and mourn, we will also remember well-lived lives. God, we pray for the illnesses and the sicknesses and the diseases and the oppressions and the attacks that come against so many in your church. We pray, Jesus, in your name for a rebuke against them, that we would be free, that we would find peace and still be able to rejoice even in our trials. God, we thank you for those who minister in the various places around the world. And today, God, we are, we are grateful that you have brought Lauren and Kathy Lou here, that they are serving in Taiwan and have been faithfully there for so many years. We have prayed for them, God, and we've lifted them up through support in many ways. And today, God, we, we ask that your anointing would be upon them and our hearts would be open, our ears would be open, that we would hear what you are doing through your word and through their lives and in a faraway land. Jesus, we are yours fully, completely surrendered to you. And all God's people said, amen. You may be seated. Now I'm going to ask Lauren if he could uh, come up and join us on the stage. We are grateful. We are, we are delighted. Uh, I saw Lauren this morning, and I haven't seen him in 15 plus years. And he goes, I recognize the face. And I said, good enough. <laughs> good enough. Let us welcome Lauren. Good morning. It's a privilege to be here. We've got long-time uh, connections with this church, not just the building, but many of the people in it. And there are some new faces, and that's exciting because uh, God's not stopped working. So this morning as we begin, I don't know, have you had something to praise God for this week? Did you even stop to think and thank Him? Uh, yet last night, we saw God answer a prayer that we've been praying for a long time. I opened up Facebook, and that's not usually where I go to find answered prayers. Uh, and, but I opened it up and I saw that Pastor Joshua from the Baljoan Alliance Church, where the place where we're serving right now, had posted a picture of him and his parents. Just before we came back to Canada in, in uh, mid-March, uh, Pastor Joshua was ordained and his parents attended the ordination service. His parents are not believers. They're not Christ followers. And so this was a major, major thing to have them even attend something. But their son was being promoted. He was getting uh, ordination. He was going from being a pastor to being a reverend. And so th there was celebration. And Pastor Joshua got up uh, to give thanks to everybody for coming and everything. And he thanked his family and he said, Mom, do you remember? You said if I ever got ordained, became a reverend, that you would be willing to go to church and uh, maybe become a Christian. And his mom stood there quite stalwartly, but his dad said, I will. The, because of the time change, Sunday morning has already happened in Taiwan. But Pastor Joshua drove actually drove my car up to Taipei, uh, the th a three-hour drive up to Taipei, who took his parents to church, and they attended church with him uh, on this weekend, this Sunday morning. Um, miraculous. And they're open to continuing to attend. So as we begin, let's just praise God. He is a God who does things even beyond what we can imagine or what we sometimes even ask him for. So, Heavenly Father, we've sung that you are a good God. In our thoughts, we want to reflect on the fact that you're a good God. 
as I speak this morning, I want to communicate your goodness and your love, your holiness and your justice, and all the ways that you manifest yourself to us. Lord, even when we're hurting, the fact that you minister to us and you are with us is something we can praise you for. Even when we're feeling lost, we realize that you are the, our portion. You are the one that works in our lives and guides us towards wholeness. We thank you for the many ways that you bless us. And as we come and we look at your word this morning, Lord Jesus, it, your words are holy because they come from you who is a holy God. Your words describe you and that makes them holy. So help us to treat your words in a holy way. Help us to be willing to accept what you say about yourself and what you say about the relationship we should have for you. Fill us with hope. Fill us with joy. Fill us with peace. Fill us with your love, I pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. This morning we want to look at a passage of scripture uh, that's in Mark chapter 14, verses 1 to 9. And they're putting it up there. Let me read it for you. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. Well, he, that is, while Jesus was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And then they turned and they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with me, and you can help them anytime you want, but you'll not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. This morning we want to talk about and think about memorable stories. What's your earliest memory? I remember living in Surrey, B.C. as a preschooler. I remember receiving a tricycle for Christmas and my parents one day sent me outside to ride it on the sidewalk in front of our house. I remember it was at that moment that I discovered that it had snowed and the tricycle did not have snow tires. There was no traction to be able to ride. There's an article in uh, the Forbes, on the Forbes website that declared, our brains are wired for story. You see, it's difficult to remember a list of facts, but we can more easily remember a story. And often, our experiences are remembered as stories. We tell each other stories. We listen to stories told by family and friends. And there's a part of us that seems to crave stories. You see, God has wired us for story. Important historical events that occurred during our lifetime are often remembered as part of a story. Let me ask, where were you when Mount St. Helens erupted? Some people can relate that to that event and tell the story of how that changed their lives in some way. Or where were you when the terrorist attack happened on the World Trade Center? 
I remember walking into my house in Taiwan after a meeting with other international workers that day and turned on the television news and I saw the live coverage of the happenings in New York and the collapse of the World Trade Center buildings. People asked, and it's even been mentioned already this morning, where were you when the major earthquakes in, occurred in Taiwan? Well, when the 7.3 magnitude earthquake happened in 1999, we were in Surrey, not very far from here. And when the 7.4 magnitude earthquake occurred on April 3rd of this year, we were in Edmonton. And so I did not feel it either time. In both cases, we did not personally experience the tremors. Thinking about things that you might have experienced, I think many in this room could share a story or two of what they experienced during COVID-19. We don't want you to keep dwelling on that, so let's, let's set that aside. Maybe some of the men in our midst want to remember purchasing that first car or the special victory of that special sports team. We remember these historical times because they relate through story to our own lives and the way we live it. Major life events are often shared as a story. The birth of a child, the passing of a significant person, a change in employment, moving to a new home. These are all stories that could be told to a willing listener if we can find one. See, Jesus makes a comment in today's Bible reading that relates to what I've just been talking about. Mark tells us the story of when expensive perfume was poured on Jesus' head. And in the discussion that happened afterward, uh, after that very unusual incident, in verse 9, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world... What she has done will also be told in memory of her. Jesus draws attention to the importance of this statement by introducing it with the words, truly I tell you. Another uh, uh, version says, I tell you the truth. Or if some of the people here that grew up with the King James, verily, verily, I say unto you. Jesus is telling us that this statement is both true and it's important. We need to pay attention to this statement. He says this is a story that should be remembered. And as we remember the story, we will also remember the woman who was the main character in it. And then he connects this story to global missions. And that's where I come in, right? Wherever the good news is preached throughout the world, it's talking about taking the good news about Jesus and telling those who have never heard. And the good news is, is that there was a moment in history when God did something very special. And that special event is good news for everyone who has ever lived in this world. He's telling us to pay attention to this fact and the excitement it creates will motivate us to want to tell others about it and we're, we need to do it even when it has to happen cross-culturally. Jesus says, as we tell God's story of salvation, we will also remember the actions of the woman in today's story. So briefly, what did she do and why should it be memorable? Well, if I had to put what happened into today's vernacular and the way we talk about it, she crashed the party. She showed up uninvited, uh, but unlike most people who crash parties and show up uninvited, she didn't stay hidden in a corner uh, just sampling the food. But she did something that drew a lot of attention to herself. She took out something that made everybody look to see what she was doing. As she opened that bottle, whether she had to break the top off or she popped the cork, I don't know. But as soon as she did, 
the perfume would have been smelled. And then she went to the guest of honor and dumped it on top of his head. Not a way to keep a low profile. But as we look at the story, I make three observations. The timing is important. The reactions are important. And the priorities are important. Now, this story occurs two days before the Passover. It was a time when everyone was cleaning their houses. You see, as good Jewish people, they had to get rid of all the yeast and all the leavening, leavening agents out of their house. And they needed to select the lamb that was going to be sacrificed during the Passover, the most important festival of the Jewish year, a time when many people, like Jesus, were traveling to Jerusalem because that was the very best place to celebrate. It was a time of popularity for Jesus, but as we read at the beginning of that story this morning, it was also a time when the Jewish religious leaders were looking to find fault with Jesus. They wanted a formal reason to accuse him of sin. You see, they knew that if they just stoned him, the people would treat him as a martyr and might still call him Messiah. But they also knew their Old Testament. And in Deuteronomy, it says, cursed is anyone who hangs on a tree. And if they could say that he was cursed, then they could say the Messiah could never be cursed. And so, those leaders are looking for a reason to accuse Jesus so that he can be hung on a cross, hung on a wooden cross, hung on the tree. And it's been noted by some pastors and scholars that Jesus, the one who hung on the cross, is the Lamb of God. Now, one of the important tasks in the days leading up to the Passover festival was the selection of the lamb, because it had to be a perfect lamb, one without bruises, one without any physical defects, and they would examine the lamb very carefully to ensure that it was suitable for sacrifice. But while inspecting the Passover lamb, at the very same time, they are inspecting the lamb of God who would take away the sins of the world. What irony. The Passover lamb was an allegorical symbol of the lamb that of the Lamb of God that was designated to bring forgiveness and salvation, dying once for all time and for all people. And yet, they're treating the two lambs in ways that are polar opposites. They fail to recognize what the Lamb of God is providing. They refuse to accept the perfection that God provides and look to find fault in it. It reminds me of a conversation that occurred in the living room of our house in Taiwan. A friend looked at the scripture uh, verse that was hanging on the wall and turned to Kathy Lou and said, I could never worship that God. And then she went on to explain that she saw the God of the Bible as being prejudiced and exclusive. You see, Jesus declared himself as the only way to God, and our friend knew that to believe in Jesus was to stop trusting in the traditional Taiwanese gods. It was beyond our friend's imagination that there could be something better than the belief system she knows. It was beyond her comprehension that it could be worth choosing Jesus and what he is offering. And as we heard her words, we realized that a spiritual battle was happening. She was unaware of the unseen powers that were working to keep her tied to a belief systems that cannot deal with the sin of mankind. And she failed to see that there was a greater blessing available being offered to her through a relationship with Christ. She was not ready to accept the good news being offered. And in the Bible story today, people are busy making decisions. And they're even choosing the Passover lamb. They're following traditions, but lacking understanding that those traditions were pointing towards Christ and the salvation that he was bringing. And even the religious leaders who knew their Old Testament scriptures were unaware of God's unfolding plan. It seems the only person in the room 
who was in tune with the divine plan was a woman who crashed the party. The second reason the timing is important is that it's happening just days before Jesus makes the ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Jesus had predicted his death, and even the disciples couldn't wrap their minds around what Jesus was saying and understand his meaning. But Jesus saw the woman's heart attitude as she came, crashed the party, and put that perfume on his head. He realized that her actions were an early anointing for his burial. We know the story that comes after. Jesus died on the cross, and some devout, follow, uh, some devout followers, I don't know why that was hard to say, some devout followers requested his body so that they could respectfully bury it. They received the body of Christ just before an important Sabbath. And time was short so that the work to bury Jesus' body was rushed. There was insufficient time for the usual traditional preparations of smearing myrrh and other spices on the corpse. But days before his death, a woman took expensive perfume that was made from the essence of nard. Now, we don't often talk about nard in today's world. It was a derivative of the spike nard plant. It had a strong, distinctive aromas similar to the to an essential oil. It was prepared as an ointment that would cling to the skin and hair, giving off a very heady perfume. And there was no pun intended that it was put on Jesus' head, okay? Uh, it was considered by some to have medicinal properties. The, the ointment that was prepared was very, very highly valued in a similar way that a Tiffany diamond or the gold standard would be valued today. Song, Song of Solomon, 1 verse 12, mentions this perfume, holding it up as the very best, as the ultimate expression of love. Guys, have you ever given your, uh, your special person in your life nard? I haven't, I'll confess. But, but it is the ultimate expression of love. And in Mark's story, a woman uses it to anoint Jesus' head. And once again... It is an expression of love. It was a sacrificial love that most in the room were unwilling or maybe even unable to express. And this woman was bringing the very best and giving it to Jesus Christ. And we read that the scent of the perfume filled the house. There was no one nearby who missed the waft of that perfume. But she did not do it for their approval. She did it to give a gift to the master. She presented it to Jesus. And in the presentation of it, others became aware of what she was doing. Now, there are some other versions of the story in other gospels, but today we're just going to focus on what Mark tells us here. And as we read about her expression of devotion, an expression of great respect. Just like there were people looking to find fault with Jesus, there were some who suddenly criticized her for her actions. The story says they talked to each other. Did you see what she did? Oh, I can't believe it. Just imagine how much that cost. And we could have used that money to help the poor. You know, uh, we've got some homeless people over there. We could have used that to help them. And some were probably just really bewildered and going, what on earth is going on? I don't know how to respond to this. But those who were critical of the extravagance, we don't even know if they were personally lavishly giving to help the poor like they thought that she should. I suspect probably not, just like the people that laughed. Jesus referred at other times to excuses people make for her not being generous and kind. And at this moment, when she's facing that critical audience, 
Jesus defends her, commending her for her priorities. The window of opportunity was small, and she had limited time to serve and bless Jesus in this way. In this case, it was limited because Jesus would soon die. He would come back to life and return to God the Father. For us, the time is limited for other reasons. C.T. Studd was a minister, uh, missionary in the late 1800s, and he's remembered for some very memor- memorable quotes that relate to this topic. He said, Only one life will... T- oh, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. I think some of us in the room have heard that one, right? On another occasion, he said, some wish to live within the sound of church or chapel bell. I want to run a rescue shop within a yard of hell. He also said, if Jesus Christ be God and died for me, there's no sacrifice that can be too great for me to make for him. We do not know when Christ Jesus will come again. Who do you know that needs to hear the good news about Jesus providing reconciliation with God? Anyone who was nearby that house when that woman gave her sacrifice to Jesus, they knew, they could smell the perfume, and it declared that Jesus Christ was present. There were people nearby, including that woman, who recognized that Jesus was the Savior of the world. In Taiwan, we're surrounded by people who worship a multitude of gods. The traditional religion, followed by the majority of of the people, pressures people to ask for help from the spirits around them, from the spirits of ancestors and uh, all the spirits that they can't see. Regular food and incense offerings are are required to appease those gods and convince them to be benevolent. The people are very devout in following their religious traditions. People in the cities have a higher percentage or chance to know a Christian believer or to hear the good news about Jesus. But in the countryside where we are living, there are few opportunities available for them to hear about Jesus. With your help, We are living there, trying to be the aroma of Christ. Your prayers and your financial support are a part of what we are doing in our small rural town in Taiwan, the town of Baozhong. There are some who smell the aroma of Christ, and like our friend at that moment many years ago, do not find the scent attractive. But there are others who are interested. And as they are drawn into a relationship with Christ, we're seeing some lives transformed. See, like the woman in our story, we are offering Christ a gift of our obedience as we take the good news to those who have not heard. So let me just finish with some stories about what God is doing in Taiwan. We spent a lot of effort and time telling Bible stories and offering activities for children in our community, including going into the classroom every single week and doing English activities and telling a Bible story. And some people will say, well, is it worth it? Because you can't pray with them while you're teaching. You can't ask them to believe. But you know, I believe it's 100% worth it. You see, Grace was an elementary student when we first met her. She enjoyed learning English in classes and enjoyed listening to the Bible stories. And last July, we had the opportunity to meet her again. She'll soon graduate from university. Yeah, I've been doing it that long. And she's fond of memories in our class times and has an interest in knowing more about Christianity. So Kathy Lou gave her a bilingual Bible. And we're praying that she'll read it. After graduation this spring, she plans to go to the United States to do a work internship, and then she will do some traveling. So, will you please pray with us for God to speak from his word, for God to direct other Christian believers into her life so that the aroma of Christ intensifies and attracts her to believe. 
A second grader began attending Sunday school this last summer. We were so glad she came, but in another way, oh, no, this was a big challenge. You see, her home situation is not the common nuclear family with parents and siblings. She lives in a home with relatives who sometimes forget to provide meals. Her way of relating to other children was to compete with them. And one way of doing that uh, and to resolve disagreement was, was by hitting and kicking or using harsh language. At church and Sunday school, we expressed love to her, but we also firmly insisted that such behavior could not be tolerated. It's taken time, but she is gradually becoming a friend to others. Many adults today would even describe her as a well-behaved young lady. You see, God is working, and as she associates with God's people, it's having an influence in her life. Just over 20 years ago, we met May and her children. May was introduced to us after she attended, attended some cooking classes offered by another international worker. That means missionary. May, uh, May attended our church's intergenerational home group. And over time, she made the decision to put her faith in Christ. She chose to be baptized, even though her husband was not really supportive of that, but he gave her permission and May's daughter was baptized at the same time. Recently, and that's the picture that should be up there. Yes, it is. Okay, May and her daughter, Minnie, visited us in our home in Baozhou. The church that we had all been attending 20 years ago no longer exists. But May and her family continue to follow Christ and are attending another church. All three of May's children, and now even her husband are now Christ followers. May is a leader at her church and has worked for a Christian organization in Taiwan for a number of years. And her life, like the lives of her family members, has been transformed as she smelled the fragrance of Christ. God gave us and our ministry partners a small part in the work he was doing in May's life. We praise God for that work. We're thankful for your prayers and for your financial support that made it possible to share the aroma of Christ with me and her family. But you know, that's not the only thing that God has accomplished as we partner with each other and partner with God. When we moved to Baojong in 2007, it was difficult to find a Christian believer. There were a few, but... As we became acquainted with them, we realized they were all attending churches outside of our community. We, are una we were unaware of any church groups actively sharing the good news about Jesus in our community at that time. And we prayed and we asked that God would use us and the partnership we have with people like you to be a catalyst to push back the darkness and create a witness for Christ. And you see, that area has a reputation in Taiwan for having the most temples per capita. If they, people want to go see a temple or want to go worship at a temple, they often come to our area. But today, a church has been started. It's small when compared to your church. There's a vibrant children's ministry happening. A youth group has recently been started. A woman's fellowship meets once a month, and we're joining the church and praying for ways to build relationships with adults so that they can learn more about Jesus. We'd hope to offer a flower arranging class or a cooking class for adults, but we're having trouble finding a suitable instructor. So please pray that God will guide us to know how to best build relationships with adults in our surrounding community. We believe that God's purpose is for the Baojong Alliance Church, that group of people, to become a healthy church that ministers to people of all ages. And as we together offer our sacrifice of love to Christ and take the story of Jesus to, to them, God is working and he is transforming lives. The story of a woman who offered a bottle of perfume to Jesus will continue to be shared with even more people. So thank you for helping us to tell her story. Thank you for helping us to tell Jesus' story to those who have never heard. 
memorable stories continue to be written. They continue to be told as God works in our lives and in the lives of others around the world. May God get the glory as we work together and offer our sacrifice, our offering to him. Let's pray. God, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to know you, to hear about you. We thank you for the ways that you have transformed us and we would say improved our lives, but in reality, you're just in the process of making us more like Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we're thankful for the fact that you give Kathy Lou and I and many others opportunity to go to places that have not heard about Jesus and give them access to Jesus' story, access to a relationship with Jesus. And you can do the work of transforming their lives there too. You are a great God. You are a good God. And we praise you and thank you this morning. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This time, I'd like to call those that will be serving uh, our communion today to come to the front. We are. We are grateful that the story that Jesus said would continue to be told was picked up by Lauren and Kathy Lou. And one day, they accepted the story themselves and said, people on the other side of the world in a language that they don't know. They're going to tell that story. And they've been telling it and telling it and telling it. And we are, we are part of the same story. We want to continue to tell the story that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he took a, a cup and wine and he gave it to his disciples and he said, as often as you do this, you proclaim my death. You tell the story to every generation until I come back. That is what we do when we come to the front. We reaffirm our commitment to tell the story. So as you prepare your hearts for the Lord's Supper, we would ask that if you're on this side to come up around the outside, and if you're on this side, come here, and, and if you're in the middle, come around this side and go this way. And after everybody has been served and you're seated, uh, I will come back and lead us in the communion. i 
Lord Jesus, we remember your body broken for us. We thank you for making the sacrifice we were not willing to make ourselves. 
we do this in honor of your sacrifice. Let us partake. Praise be the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You who died on the cross, you who hung bleeding, sacrificing, and uttering words that changed my life forever. Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. This blood represents the forgiveness of our sin. We take it knowingly and with gratitude. Let us partake. Some of you before the service had asked for prayer. So we want to make sure that there's going to be an opportunity for you to come to the front to receive prayer for the many needs that are in our congregation today. Our elders will be staying behind and those who are part of our prayer ministry will stay behind also. So while the rest are dismissed to go out into the foyer and to visit and to fellowship and to enjoy, we, we want to do that. We want you to do that and enjoy that. But we'd ask that you would just leave quietly to allow those who want to come forward for prayer to have this time, this sanctuary, to be a place where we can minister. God bless you all. We'll see you next week. <laughs>